Hello, this video is all about photosynthesis and we're going to look at an overview of how the process works and then I want to look at a couple of ways in which we can measure the rate of photosynthesis. But to start off with, we can look at the word itself, which is broken down into photo and synthesis. Photo means light and synthesis means to make. And what is it the plant is making? It's food. Photosynthesis, as you know, is linked to plants. And by plants, we're talking about all the different kinds of plants that are present on the planet. We've got land plants, which is obviously our trees and all the other variety of plants that we have. But we also have plants that are found in water and they carry out the same process as well. But we also have another kind of living thing called algae. And algae is a microscopic living thing. And we describe that as photosynthetic as well. And the type of living thing is a protist. And that's we've looked at that in a, another video. But what we can do to look at the way photosynthesis works is to look at a word equation. And the word equation is very important to know and remember. What we have is carbon dioxide, which reacts with water. And during photosynthesis, when those two react, we have the production of glucose. And glucose is the food that we're talking about. So we can be more specific about uh, that. And then we have also the production of oxygen and oxygen is a waste product when we have photosynthesis going on in the daylight or when there's plenty of sunlight. We also need sunlight as well, and that's a source of energy. And that sunlight needs to be captured and absorbed, and that's done by a chemical called chlorophyll, and that's found in chloroplasts, which are present in high number in leaves. It's important to remember that photosynthesis is what we call an endothermic reaction. And by endothermic, we mean a reaction that takes in energy from the surroundings. Now, the word thermic or word therm usually relates to heat. But in this case, we're talking about sunlight being absorbed from the environment in order for that reaction to proceed. We can also um, look at a formula equation so we could quite simply change these into their formulas or formulae carbon dioxide is co2 water is h2o glucose will do in a sec oxygen as you probably know is o2 okay but in terms of glucose we've got carbon hydrogen and oxygen present because it's a carbohydrate and we could just add the number 6 12 and 6 you should at the very least be able to recognize that that is glucose. We can then add in our arrow as we did above. Uh, I'm not going to write in sunlight and chlorophyll again, but let's just add the arrow there. And as an extra bit, if we want to see that balance, because this equation is not balanced, we could go ahead and spend a long time working it out, but it's actually quite easy to remember that it's just adding three sixes in those positions shown there. Okay, so that's our balanced equation for photosynthesis. It might be worth just briefly looking at how the leaf gets what it needs for photosynthesis. So carbon dioxide comes in from the air, or if it's a water plant, it comes in from the surrounding water. The oxygen leaves the leaf into the air. Let's tidy that up a little bit. So the oxygen leaves the leaf into the air, and both of those things happen by a process called diffusion. So CO2 diffuses in when we've got photosynthesis happening and oxygen diffuses out. We also have water required and that comes in from the soil and it's absorbed through the roots. So it goes into the roots and the way it gets into the roots is a specific process as well and that's osmosis. Let's just write that a bit more neatly. But that process is osmosis and that gets the water from the soil into the roots but we don't just need it in the roots, we need to get it up the plant. And the way in which water gets up the plant is by another process called transpiration. Two important key words to remember. Okay, so we've got transpiration moving water up the plant and osmosis moving it into the plant from the soil into the roots. Okay, so that's an overview of how the uh, photosynthesis actually works through, that, through our word equation. But what I wanna look at now is how we can actually measure the rate of photosynthesis. And the easiest way to do this 
is to measure the amount of oxygen produced, but that's hard to do in land plants, so we can use uh, pondweed or a plant that grows in water. And here we've got an example of some pondweed, and the common one that we use, which is quite easy to work with, is something called elodea or elodea. Okay, and that gives off bubbles if we've given it enough time to acclimatize. It gives off bubbles of oxygen. We might also want to add a chemical in there that gives off carbon dioxide for the, for the plant to use. But in combination with our timer, we can measure the bubbles per minute given off by this pondweed. And that would give us an indication of the rate of photosynthesis. We can be slightly more involved and we could use a piece of apparatus that looks like this. So we've got a funnel and that's linked up to an inverted or an upside down measuring cylinder. And as you can see, we've got the plant, the pondweed at the bottom, photosynthesizing away. And those bubbles collect at the top. And we can actually measure the volume of bubbles, which would be given by this apparatus in centimeters cubed. So using our timer as well, we would have centimeters cubed per minute, which would be a suitable rate to use for measuring photosynthesis. We can get involved further still and use a slightly more tricky or complicated piece of apparatus and it looks like this. We have our plant photosynthesizing away but we have a long tube filled with water with a syringe at the end which is continuous with the water in our boiling tube. The bubbles collect at the top of our tube over here and if we pull our syringe out after our uh, period of time we can move that bubble down to the flat part of the tubing there and there we have a measuring scale. And when we see apparatus like this, the scale is often calibrated or the, the units are often in millimeters cubed. And therefore our rate for this would be millimeters cubed per minute. Okay, so there we have three different ways of measuring the rate of photosynthesis. It's probably important just to highlight the fact that the production of oxygen gives us a indication of how fast photosynthesis is actually going. The more oxygen produced in a certain amount of time, the faster the rate of photosynthesis. And the easiest way to do it is using, is using uh, pondweed because the bubbles are much more easy to detect and measure. Okay, so now what we can do is actually look at how we might set up an experiment to do this. And it might look something like this. We're going to look at one of two, we're going to look at two ways in which we can do this. In our first experiment, we've got our pondweed and a lamp and a timer we're measuring bubbles per minute and for light intensity in arbitrary units we're going to use a lamp and what we can do is change the voltage of the lamp and that will give us different light intensities and we're going to measure the number of bubbles over a period of five minutes and then we can calculate the rate for each light intensity and it's just a question of dividing the number of bubbles by the time, so I can do the first one there for you. So it's zero divided by five. So if there's zero light, we can have zero photosynthesis and our rate would be naught bubbles per minute. Have a go at doing the rest yourself if you want to. You can pause here and do those yourself. But if not, just hang on there and um, I'll have them all done for you. Okay, so there we go, there's our results and we can then go ahead and plot that on some graph paper we need to get the labels right on the graph, so we have to look at what our independent variable is. And in this case, it's our light intensity. And our dependent variable, the thing we're measuring, is the rate of photosynthesis given by bubbles per minute. So let's just add those in to the graph. There we go. And then we can go ahead and plot light intensity versus rate of photosynthesis in bubbles per minute. So let's just uh, put those in on the graph. So naught is naught. 10 goes up to 0 0.8, which is about there. 20 is 2.4, about there. It's not the best piece of graph paper there I've used, but we can get accurate enough, an accurate enough graph. 40 is there, 50 is at 6, and 60 is at 6 also. And we have our graph. We have the points which we can join with a curve of best fit. And that shows us then that the higher the light intensity, the faster the rate of photosynthesis until we reach a maximum. 
and the maximum is shown by the flat bit or supposed to be a flat bit at the top there and that's at six bubbles per minute okay so that's one way we can measure or do our experiment on the rate of photosynthesis as affected by light intensity but there's another way in which you can do it this is a required practical you may or may not have done this in class but you certainly should have had a go at it and we're looking at the distance of the lamp versus the rate of photosynthesis in this case we're using a slightly more accurate apparatus and we're measuring in millimeters cubed per minute so the important key thing to remember here is that the bigger the distance of the lamp from the plant the lower the light intensity so the distance of the lamp is linked closely to the light intensity okay so let's highlight those two there just so we know and the way we do this is we have the lamp close we allow the plant to acclimatize for a few minutes get used to that light intensity and then we measure bubbles for every five minutes and then we change to 10 to 20 to 30 and so on each time allowing the rate of photosynthesis to level off and then again we can measure the rate we can do that by uh, dividing the volume of oxygen by the time which is in uh, five minutes in this case and again we can work all those out you can have a go at doing that yourself if you want to you can pause here and do that but if not I'll add it on now there we go so there's our rate of photosynthesis worked out in millimeters cubed per minute and then we can draw our graph but have a quick think what would the graph look like have a pause here and decide what you think the graph is going to look like what's the independent variable the dependent variable what would the shape of the graph be okay so let's have a look at how we're going to plot this graph over here what we have is our distance of our lamp versus the rate of photosynthesis so these are the two columns that we're plotting and the distance of the lamp is our independent variable that's the variable that we changed during the investigation and dependent variable is the rate of photosynthesis okay so I've got those labeled on the graph there distance along the bottom along the x-axis and rate on the y-axis and that's how you uh, arrange your your variables on a, on a graph on a line graph okay so let's plot through each point you remember when you do this yourself in the exam do it very carefully I'm going through this quite quickly now just so you don't have to watch me plot the points but I'm being very careful to make sure each point is correct once you've done that you can see that the lines naturally fall in a curve so you can draw your curve of best fit remember these graphs the lines are not always straight when you draw a line of best fit it could be a curve of best fit as well but with curves they're slightly more tricky to draw so draw very carefully so here we go join up the points okay I think I've uh, missed that one there so let's have another go okay that's even worse uh, let me just do this properly and I'll come back right there we go so there's the curve of best fit there is a point there that's slightly out but if I join that up it would have given a slight hump in the at the end uh, towards the end there so that looks like it's an outlier um, so yes there's our graph uh, we've done we've had we've looked at two ways we've um, changed the light intensity by changing the voltage in fact for voltage potential difference is probably a better word to use but it means the same thing and then we've also looked at changing the light intensity by changing the distance of the lamp okay so that's um, some important skills and information that we need for our uh, GCSE biology thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon